Now it all became clear. I understood why the IRS wouldn't go on camera and talk about where the law was. I understood why all the senators I called refused to be interviewed. There is no law. And now you know what our political leaders and the courts have known for decades and have tried to cover up. The United States Constitution strictly forbids a direct, unapportioned tax on the wages and salaries of American citizens. The United States Supreme Court has consistently ruled that the income tax is a tax on profits and gains, not on labor and wages. On behalf of the American people, I challenge the IRS to show me a statute that allows a direct, unapportioned tax on the wages and labor of the American people. And if I'm wrong, I will give my most humble apologies to the IRS. If the IRS is wrong, and there is no law, then every person who's been jailed should be let out of jail immediately, and any assets seized should be returned to their rightful owners. If this is a nation of laws and a free country, then the IRS should show the law to the American people. I felt an overwhelming need to understand why juries were finding innocent people guilty of not filing a tax return when there was no law requiring them to do so. So I went to talk to Marcy Brooks, a juror who used her common sense and did not allow the judge to rear the jury into a guilty verdict. He was being tried for four counts of not filing his income tax. Okay. And our question was, well, what is to decide? Either he did or he didn't. It never occurred to us that he might actually be innocent while at the same time not filing. In the federal government, it is not a felony not to file taxes. Finally, they said, okay, if we're going to get this guy, we're going to have to put it in the state. They called up the IRS agent. Agent Craner. Craner. Craner? Yeah. Father Craner. Mm -hmm. This is Ken Doherty. He's also an investigator with the Illinois Department of Revenue. Yeah. This is a request for a copy of the delegation and ability order. Right. And I talked to my boss about that, and he said that my badge is that. Badge is the authority. Hmm. Uh, I thought it had to be in writing. The last question that the defense asked him was, did you write any of this down? And Agent Craner looked right at him and right at us, and he said, I never wrote anything down. And yet when we saw the video, there he was, writing notes, you know. And so I, I'm thinking, okay, at this point, the judge is supposed to say, Agent Craner, it is clear that you have committed perjury. It, it wasn't even noticed. It finally came to the climax. Mr. Harrell looked right at the prosecutor and he said, I will tell you the same thing I have told over and over again to government officials. You show me the law that requires me to file a tax return and I'll be glad to do it. And again, I ask, under what is the requirement that you claim and require to do this stuff? And the requirement under the regulations is what section? My question to you is, what particular act are we discussing here that I am liable to do these things that you claim I'm liable to do? Your exact question would be again? Okay, what is the section that what? But I guess I'm still not understanding your question, Mr. Harrell. <laughs> well, you must be familiar with what you, did you, that you have the police powers to enforce. Yes. The prosecutor absolutely ignored him. And he started slandering Mr. Harrell. Just started attacking his character. They're calling us tax sheets. They're calling us fanatics. They're calling us weirdos. I don't care what you call me, but I have one question. Where is the law? Show me the law. They can't let this turn into a rational debate, because if they do, they lose it. So they have to insult people and say it's frivolous. We felt like that there was an overall arrogance and that they were railroading Mr. Harrell. 
and wanting us to participate, Judge Coogan. He looked right at us and he said, I will instruct the jury according to the law. We were sent to deliberation. The judge promised us that he would give us the law. And we looked and we looked and it was not there. We wrote a note to the judge asking for a copy of the law. Ten minutes later, we get a note back. You have everything you need. But there was no law. And he had promised us. At, the, at that point, I felt betrayed. I felt like this man promised us the law. And that's what this whole thing is about, the law. We request it. And he still denies us the law. And the reason they didn't do it was why? Because there is no law. Remember, we're talking about the Illinois state law here, okay, which is a law in Illinois. So we got out that law, and we read it several times, and I said, okay, wait, 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 you know, because they kept saying, but he, this is a law in Illinois. And I said, look at the beginning of it. It says, anyone required to file a federal income tax return is required to file an Illinois tax return. I said, if it is true that he's not required to file a federal return, then that nullifies the Illinois law. Two people, uh, they kept saying, but he's going to get by with it. And I said, what is he getting by with but his rights? If there is no law, he's not breaking a law. He's just standing on his rights. Are we going to deny him that? That's when this one juror sat back and kind of rolled his eyes and he said, you mean we don't have to pay taxes? All of a sudden we realized that this trial was much bigger. And the ramifications of this trial were going to be so broad if it actually got out. I mean, it's like, it's like we had just discovered this great government secret. And so when we came out for, for the delivering of the verdict, the judge was, I'm sure, even at this point, I'm sure he still thought we would pass given guilty verdict. And the reason I say that is because of the look on his face. <laughs> when the first not guilty was read. His face just turned white. I mean, it's like, I don't believe this. The second time, you could hear people out in the audience, just in the courtroom, you know, just going, wow, you know. And the judge is just getting red in the face. I mean, he was just livid. And the judge got up and left. Yeah. I sat there and I thought, this truly is a victory for the people. And I have never felt more patriotic. And I knew that we had done the right thing. I looked at that man, Mr. Harrell, and I thought, the system might not work all the time. But this time, for that man, it did. In November 2004, the government arrested former IRS criminal investigator Joe Bannister. They charged him with fraud for telling the American people the truth about the income tax laws. The jury obviously agreed with Joe. Well, it just showed Mr. Bannister to be honest and straightforward and working within the law. Vernus Kuglin, a Federal Express pilot, claimed there was no law requiring Americans to file an income tax. She also won in court. 24 people were criminally charged by the IRS because they claimed there was no law requiring them to file an income tax return. The fact is that neither the judge nor the prosecutor nor the IRS could bring that statute in there because it's not in the books. The jury came back with an acquittal for everyone. 